Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 21 minutes after 7 o'clock. And joining us in studio the, uh, this morning from the city of Roswell, uh, the uh, Community Development Director, Kevin Mavers. Is that the official title or is it? That some... is the official title. At good. least that's what they call me in public. That's the one, uh, yeah, that, when they give you a card, that's one. Yeah, that... <laughs> exactly. Well, good exactly. morning. Welcome to uh, welcome to the show here. Thanks for spending time with well, us. Mike, it's great to be here. This is... Uh, uh, been looking forward to coming yeah. on and talking about all the great things that are happening in Roswell, and I'm glad we were finally able to set this up. And yeah, it's my yep. understanding it's going to be a regular deal. Yeah, from my understanding as well, uh, Kevin's going to be joining us here the the fourth uh, Wednesday of each month this time, mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of give us an update on some of the things happening in and around the city here, as far as uh, development wise and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, I guess maybe before we do that, kind of give the give the the layman's. Uh, definition of what the community development director is for the city. You know the the layman's definition is is almost exactly what it sounds okay. like. Yeah. I I am develop my, community. My, things. Yeah, I, we are developing the community. We are my department. The community development department has five different divisions. Okay, we have our planning and zoning division, mm -hmm. and, and we also have our building inspections division. Okay, business license division. Okay. Code enforcement, and then our real property division. Okay. So all five of those divisions report to me. Gotcha. Essentially. So, so the sexy one's the one where like, what's new, what's coming, and all that. But the real work's probably being done in the, you know, the some of those others, the getting the permits, the construction, the actual development right. side the, of the, it. The we, uh, I, what I like to tell people is that if you are interested in building, developing, uh, renovating your house, remodeling, anything you want to do. We will walk you through the process from concept to occupancy. Gotcha. Everything in between. And keep you out of trouble doing it. As best we can. <laughs> you know, people do have a habit of finding their own way into trouble. We sometimes have to help them get out of it. This is true, yes. You know, so. uh, well, and, that's, and I think that's because, um, you know, let's face it. Anytime you do any major work to a structure or anything in your home or business mm -hmm. or whatever, you just can't we willy-nilly start buying some boards and putting those up. I mean, like if you're inside your house and you're replacing floors or paint walls, that's one thing. But if you're adding a room or doing anything that really requires some infrastructure, yep. you, you need to get permits and make sure you do it by by the book. You know, and that would be my advice to anyone. Yeah. In fact, if you, Juanita Jennings, our uh, public affairs uh, director. You know, she and I have been working together. We're going to be coming out uh, with a number of different uh, PSAs and mm -hmm. other campaigns talking about the need to hire professional contractors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got so many people uh, that every time, every spring, we have the hailstorms. Every spring, there's sure. a gigantic run-up in, in the number of permits that are issued, mm -hmm. especially for re-roofing and things like that. People need to remember that if you have insurance on your home, if that... If that roof isn't repaired by a licensed contractor, if it's not inspected by the city and signed off, you just vote, no, did you, or, you just bought yourself a roof. You just, oh, whether okay. it's okay, your insurance company will not reimburse you for those costs gotcha. as part of your homeowner's insurance. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. And it sure. takes it takes if you come into into our uh, building inspections office, it takes about two minutes to pull up the uh, information and find out whether the person that's representing themselves as a contractor mm -hmm. is in fact a licensed contractor. Gotcha. Yeah, so we're going to, we want to make sure that everybody that's listening and even beyond the sound of our mm -hmm. voices here knows and understands our offices, we are open to serve. Gotcha. That is what we want to do. We want to make sure that everybody is taken care of. You're on, your, you're on their side, not... You know, you, if, although people probably feel like you're not, you are on that. Oh, side. actually, that's that's very, very true. Yeah. You know, you know, when I was brought into the city of Roswell, uh, I had an opportunity to go to a number of different locations. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point in my career, I had made a decision that I was going to finish my career working in a city that uh, was just right on the precipice of greatness, and that's one of the things that I, I really noticed about the city of Roswell. Uh, came in and as I was negotiating and talking to people, I said, I said, I don't want to be the guy that tells people no, that you can't. You want to come to me with your ideas. You want to come to our department with the, with the things you want to accomplish and let us help you find a way to get it done. Okay. I, uh, we have a number of people, uh, lots, about mm -hmm. hundreds, hundreds 
that have money and they're reinvesting in themselves right now. They're at new room additions. Yeah, which is a good thing. Carports, absolutely. Yeah. There is absolutely nothing better than people that are ready and willing and able to invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. So I told my, my entire team, from my planning and zoning team to my building inspections team, I said, we will find a way to help these people reinvest in themselves, reinvest in their neighborhoods, reinvest in the community, because that's how you create prosperity is by reinvesting over yeah. and over and and truly getting that equity, that, that financial equity in your sure. property. So that's what the, uh, I don't want people to be afraid. Pick up the phone, come by, by our offices, uh, talk to me, talk to our uh, chief building inspector, Miller Butts, mm -hmm. talk to uh, Todd Versiglio, who's in our real property division. Mm -hmm. uh, Meredith uh, Hildreth is running our planning and zoning division. They All of us are here to serve the citizens of, of this city and, and to and try to streamline the what can be a confusing and complicated process for you that is a major objective <laughs> of of our office stream permit streamlining let okay. me uh, ask since we're talking about contractors and sure. things i i happen to just hear a story and i believe it was on the albuquerque news covering uh it was either yesterday or day before but um like you said growth is going on a lot of people are are doing a lot of work right now uh it's just it's a boom time for that which uh but with the COVID world we live in, supply and demand. Um, but what the, the thing that they're really noticing right now is there is an influx of these quote unquote fly by night style contractors going on there. And I know you kind of touched on you know, doing your homework on picking the right contractor. I, I was kind of curious, are you seeing, you know, through your office in Roswell an influx of this kind of stuff where people are having issues with contractors or 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 finding out if people are legit contractors or having issues running into some of these shady characters. Again, you're, you're going to run into those shady characters yeah. in any community everywhere. They're, they're just people who don't want to play by the rules. Sure. Where we find it is it, it accelerates. You have a, a group of people out there when we call them affectionately storm chasers. Gotcha. Storm chasers. Mm -hmm. And they will show up. In Louisiana after a hurricane. Mm -hmm. They will show up here in Roswell after a big... They were here a couple years ago yeah, when yeah. we had a, one of those big hailstorms. One of those there, yeah. big hailstorms. And that's exactly how they make all their money. They, yeah. they sweep into town. They're most likely unlicensed, or may they be unlicensed in, uh, in another... Mexico, they may be licensed yeah. in another state, but they may not be licensed here in New Mexico. They come in. They take people's money. The work that they do is generally shoddy. And then they scoop back out and... If you haven't checked up on them mm -hmm. and made sure they are professional, made sure they're licensed, make sure we have good contact information, there's no recourse. Gotcha. There's no recourse whatsoever. Y'all so can't chase them. Y'all can't, can't do that. Uh, but, yeah. But, uh, but I didn't know if it with the, uh, I, you know, because they're saying the kind of, they're seeing more of that going on now. I didn't know if we're here in Roswell. Not we're yet. As well. not, okay. not yet. No. In fact, we're seeing the exact opposite with our local contractors. Good. And I'm actually very, very uh, proud of the, the group of contractors that we've been dealing with. Part of the permit streamlining process that we're, we're working with is we work with the contractors, we work with the building community, the development community. In order to streamline the process, though, what it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You have to have really good plans and really good designs coming in from your building and development community, whether that's your engineers, your architects, your contractors, your designers. And then we have to have a commitment to turn those plans around okay. as quickly as possible to review them. If we get our builders and, and developers turning in really good sets of plans, really good, clean, I mean, they, they meet all the building codes, they meet all the requirements. If they turn those things in and we have a commitment from our staff, which mm -hmm. I'm letting everyone know right now, well, you do. You have a commitment from our staff to turn things around sure. in the minimum amount of time, not the maximum. I know a couple of cities here in this state where <laughs> they are committed to, to the maximum and then some. <laughs> they'll get to when they get to yeah, it guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> and even then they may not get to them you know depending on what uh, else is on their plate mm -hmm. but we are trying to turn things around really really quickly gotcha. and coming uh coming from a state where permit time was measured in months and years sure you know we're looking to measure permitting time in days and weeks awesome depending on the size of the project the scope of the project and things like that so, so I'm, I'm, i gotta imagine too that helps i mean you guys must be doing at least okay personnel wise on your so i'm sure you're probably still hiring because everybody's still hiring but i imagine um because that's 
you know, especially during COVID, when there's delays, it's generally because, well, I got one or two inspectors because that's what we got right now. And, and now is that starting to build back up and getting to a point where... Slowly but surely. Gotcha. Slowly but surely. We are having to look beyond the boundaries of not just Roswell, but mm-hmm. the state of New Mexico. And, bring in talent to and come and do this. Bring in some of the talent, uh, and we're doing the best we can. Yeah. Do we have openings? Absolutely. I so think if you know anybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and now here, un- atypically, I'll use that word. Okay. Because it's a bit unusual. We are getting some help from uh, Santa Fe. Good. On that. There's legislation right now pending <laughs> up at the state that it's going to streamline the process of uh, reciprocity. Okay. So if you are a licensed engineer, a licensed on- architect, contractor, people in the medical fields, any kind of of uh, job that the uh, that the state would issue a license for, okay. the new reciprocity rules will allow you to come in and, from what I understand, if you are in good standing in the state you are coming from, mm-hmm. they will immediately issue you a provisional license. Gotcha. While you go through the process of getting fully licensed, okay. So, so they're kind of trusting the other states' background work on you until you do your own right. background work. And it's it's not really that unusual because okay. it just contractors sure. uh, in particular. The state of New Mexico uses the uh, International Building Code mm-hmm. and some other well adopted uh, uh, documentation. That that's our Bible for building design inspection the mm-hmm. for residential and commercial and industrial and everything else. So if you and every other state adopts that. Mm-hmm. Now some states do go over and above that. Sure. But everybody's got that floor. Everybody's got There's that. There's a minimum. bare a basic essential bare minimum. Yeah. What do you kind of think? And uh, that's what we have uh, not only here in Roswell but statewide. Mm-hmm. So uh, that level of reciprocity is pretty easy. Gotcha. Your civil engineers, your architects, uh, the vast majority of them. Uh, the uh, again, there's a, flo- a particular floor in terms of education mm-hmm. uh, and experience before you get licensed just about anywhere. Sure. And uh, some states go a little heavier on that than others. Uh, needless to say, for anybody coming from uh, coming, say, from California, mm-hmm. uh, if you're a licensed engineer, the one thing that they have over there that we do not have here in New Mexico is you have to take an eight hour exam in seismic uh Engineering, which so, probably yeah, makes sense. Yeah, they're, they're dealing so, with that a little bit more than yeah, we are here, they, and certainly other parts. So it's it's, but it is nice to see, and it's not just uh, professionals that would come through our office. Mm-hmm. Again, this is the medical fields, so we're going to be uh, able to get uh, more doctors, more uh, other uh, licensed professionals. The only one I did, interestingly enough, and you would probably expect this coming out of Santa Fe, there's no reciprocity for attorneys. <laughs> 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 I believe you have to go to school here. You have to go through the process. They're probably going, there's enough us lying around. Yeah, we're, gonna, yeah, we're not so, going to give them results. Uh, but uh, so the, uh, the, uh, there may be a shortage of attorneys here one of these days. But uh, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever heard that statement. We don't have enough lawyers around yeah, here. I've, I've never heard that statement. I've never heard that statement in, in my, either, All but, of my life, no one said, we don't have enough lawyers around here. <laughs> never heard that statement. So I think we're okay. I think we are too. So, anyway. <laughs> um. I, <clears throat> excuse me. Yep, I'm at the tail end of a cold, so every once in a while this creeps up <laughs> on me. Um, do uh, when it comes to like commercial businesses, entities wanting to set up shop in Roswell, is planning and zoning the first place they go through, or is that through the the, the Eddy County or the Eddie Chavez County uh, Roswell DC? Or I mean, where, where, or or is that a partnership there? In essence? The answer to the question is all of the above. Gotcha. Uh, the, the the we work exceedingly closely. In fact, I personally have been meeting with Mike Esprito over at the Roswell Chavez County EDC. Yeah. I think think since the first day I, I got here, first or second day I got here in town. Mike and I have a very close working relationship. I met with him for a couple hours just yesterday because he and I both understand that nexus between community development and economic development. Yeah. The it doesn't matter how much good work the EDC does, and they do tremendous work. Uh, they are they are responsible for. There's going to be some amazing new. They're kind of like the cheerleaders for the world. For, they or, they really are. But if they he can't close a deal, he can't bring that new big division of uh, like ascent. We mm-hmm. just had the groundbreaking yeah. there, because the first thing that they ask is, where are my people going to live? That's my yeah, end. Of the come. So that's uh, why. Let me that's talk wh- to Kevin. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so Mike can bring them in. I have to find a place to sure. ha- to house them. Sure. And then once you have all those good 
high-paying industrial-type jobs, especially right. what's going on at the airport, there is a multiplier effect. So the and because we're relatively isolated, we don't get the bleed of our our money here in town the way they do like up north in in Albuquerque. You can have your job in uh, uh, in Albuquerque. But you go home to Rio Rancho, sure, or you go yeah. home to Santa Fe, or you go home community. to one of the outlying communities. Yeah. Here, you live, work, play, shop, yeah. everything right here We may in have town. a few Dexter Hagerman uh, bedroom community travelers, but so, for the most part, yeah, they live here. Yeah, so when we, when we get the jobs, we get the housing, then you end up with all the retail establishments mm-hmm. and the eating and drinking establishments, and then the medical facilities and all of that other stuff. So... Mike is really, really good at getting out there and and beating the bushes and getting people excited sure. about coming to Roswell. I've got to make sure they've got a place to go once they get here. Sure, and and I would imagine you know through planning and zoning, then you got to work with you know the 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 the, the, the maintenance side, the the folks that set up water and streets and, right. and making sure all the infrastructure that the city provides so. is available to that business, and and depending on that business's. Uh, needs and making sure that whatever whatever they need's got to happen. And that's where I really enjoy working with the team Mm -hmm. at the city. We have a tremendous city engineer. I mean, he's a superstar. He is is a a great guy to work with. Uh, He and I do speak the same language because I grew up with a dad who was a civil engineer, Ah, uh, just like like Mr. Nahar is. And so my dad was teaching me civil engineering at a very young age. The, so I understand civil engineering, I understand sewer and water, I understand roads, I understand all of that. And so uh, I developed that good, solid working relationship, not only with our engineering and public works department, but mm-hmm. also with our sanitation department, all, our solid waste department. All of those utilities, uh, water and the sewer, the natural gas, the electricity, everything that it takes to quite literally, lay the groundwork sure. for the structures that are going to be going vertical. Uh, and for anybody that uh, follows me on Facebook mm-hmm. uh, and follows the city, you'll be seeing, you've been seeing some photos, and I've been making some posts recently about some of the wonderful things that are coming here to Roswell. Absolutely. And there's, we're generating, generating some excitement. Uh, we're going to get some amazing new stuff. And yeah. it's it's going to be it's a uh, culmination, you know, I... Today's the 23rd of February, mm-hmm. is that correct? February 22nd, last year, was my first day on the job. Well, with happy one-year anniversary. Happy <laughs> one-year and, and from what I understand, a whole bunch of people lost a whole bunch of money uh, yesterday because the over-under on me lasting a year <laughs> was about five to one odds, and uh, and I made it. So, well, you know, I'm glad you made them a little poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's a it's been a very exciting year, and we really hit the ground running sure. as soon as I got here with the permit streamlining, with the creating the one-stop shop, with the looking at our uh, zoning and development codes, making sure that they were brought up. We're going to be doing some new master planning and getting the city involved in that. And then, of course, on top of everything else, the uh, state blessed us in uh, July of last year with a cannabis ordinance that we're we're having to uh, uh, navigate that one. And that one is uh, cannabis is is unusual in that you have to design a complete process from start to finish. And I want to ask you about that from your, get your perspective, because, uh, yeah, and I've talked with the mayor about this multiple times on the mm-hmm. show here, and, and and really what the state did with this was they said, all right, we're going to make recreational marijuana cannabis legal. Oh, by the way, you get to figure out how to implement it. We're not giving you very little of any guidelines on how to implement this program. And so, so every municipality in the state for the mm-hmm. last year now has been scrambling to try to come up with a plan for how they're going to go recreational with this cannabis here in April. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm just from your perspective, I'm curious, like how much of that, I mean, how much, how many nights sleep lost, how much hair pulled? I mean, I got to imagine, <laughs> I got to imagine they, they just dump this on your lap and you're like, all right, I guess I'll figure this one out. It, it is interesting because to the best of my knowledge, yeah. to the best of my knowledge, and I, I may be wrong because I haven't been here that long. But to the best of my knowledge, I am the only community development director in the entire state of New Mexico 
that has experience dealing with cannabis. Okay, so you you have a little under your belt. I uh, mean, not <laughs> about six or seven years worth of experience <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on on both sides of the counter, from the private sector side as well as from the public sector side. Gotcha. Uh, before arriving in Roswell, I I designed, drafted, and uh, implemented a number of ordinances in a number of cities in Southern California. Okay. On the private sector side, I worked with the private sector uh, folks for cultivation, manufacturing, processing, and everything else, Getting going through the permitting process. Gotcha. Uh, and, so uh, that gives you at least a guideline. Well, to, I, I give, uh, what, I, what it gave me is, is a wonderful both sides of the counter perspective on the industry. So you can understand yeah. the, the inconveniences on the, the seller side right. and the, the, city, the government side yeah. here and, and try to mitigate yeah. that. And that's the, the one thing that I have had to explain, and, and I do a lot of teaching and a lot of educating when people come to my office. With respect to the cannabis, okay, the state said that recreational use of cannabis, individual use, users, uh, is they has been essentially decriminalized. So you have the ability to grow up to six plants per person in your own home mm -hmm. for personal consumption. Where it gets crazy is on the commercial end of it. If you are a commercial cultivator, a commercial manufacturer, now you are in the most heavily regulated industry in the entire United States. Wow. Okay. It is, it is, and it's because of that disconnect between the way the federal government still looks at cannabis gotcha. and the way the state looks at cannabis. So sitting down and, and talking to people who want to come in and say, open a dispensary or they want to open a grow facility. Do they start with the state? Yes. But the state only gives you your, the, what they call the regulatory permit. Okay. The regulatory permit then allow, gives you permission after you go through all the background checks and all the other things, you will get a regulatory permit as a, uh, cultivator or as a, a, a commercial uh, dispensary okay. or any of these other things. And they have uh, all different categories of, of licenses that are available. Okay. What that doesn't give you, though, is a permit to operate. Okay. So the cities, all of our jurisdictions, uh, the city of Roswell, the county, and everybody else, we have the responsibility for determining and and setting up the regulations for what they call time, place, and manner. Okay. Time, place, and manner. That's where your zoning code comes in and your development code and everything else associated with it. Beyond that, though, it's still up to the the business person. And once they get everything in place, they've still got to figure out how to do their banking. They've still got to figure out how to provide security. They've still got to figure out uh, how to fund and finance and, and all the other things. So is... It is, it is a lot more difficult to get into the cannabis business than people realize. Yeah. It's, it, it's exceedingly challenging. And probably will be until the feds change their stance, probably. Well, yeah. even then, though, it'll be the, the city still governs time, place, and manner. So gotcha. we can say very specifically that there has to be some separation distance between uh, say a, uh, a dispensary and a school or yes. a church or yeah. any place where children gather. Yeah, exactly. The the we uh, historic there there are other uh, places like the the historic district here just to the west of us. Uh, it's been determined to be inappropriate for that particular district. So there are certain areas. If you want to do cultivation, you need to be in an industrial zone. If you want to do manufacturing things like that, if you want to do actual retail sales, whether recreational or uh, medical, mm -hmm. either one, those can go in a commercial zone. Um, but there's a lot of things. I, I always encourage anybody who's interested in getting in, into that business to give our office a call. Do your homework. We have we have a 85-page handbook <laughs> on on and that's just from the city <laughs> yeah and then you go to the uh you go to the state's website and they'll give you all their regulations and once you've waded through that 200 plus pages and and the website and things that go along with it <laughs> if you uh if you aren't in uh in need of uh an adult beverage or or some other uh, type of uh, <laughs> cannabis uh, yeah <laughs> you will be yeah i can imagine yeah, yeah you're you good and glassy eyed yeah. by then yeah. here but yeah. Well, and I imagine there's there's probably some of that by design because they want to weed out, pardon the pun, 
uh, you know, the serious people from folks that just decided one day, I want to grow marijuana, man, you know, and separate those people. Now, now you, what you just did right there, I can't tell you how many times I've had people sit across from me, dude, I just want to grow my bud. <laughs> So, That's what I think it's there. And, and then the education process starts. <laughs> it's like hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little more difficult than they anticipated, yeah. and that's. But it was, as you said, it was it was done by design. Yeah. Okay, it is uh, marijuana, uh, cannabis. Uh, does it have? Uh, is there tremendous m- uh, pharmaceutical and medicinal potential? Sure. Yes, there is. Yeah, and that, absolutely. That, that area of of the industry is growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, right now, uh, is there is recreational use uh, something that's uh, rather innocuous and probably not going to cause any serious problems? Most likely. Yeah. But it's when you cross that line between being just a home grower and sure. a user, and you become a commercial enterprise, that's when all the regulations hit. That's right. Well, and, and because think about it. I mean, think about the product you're selling. The product mm-hmm. you're you don't cover your your butt on this uh you could end up in i mean just for instance what if you know say the permits aren't there and you start just growing your weed weed willy-nilly and mm-hmm. then what if something's wrong with it what if something getting people sick and killed out there right uh guess what uh, yeah you're you're gonna you're gonna have a world of problems uh, yeah so anyway uh-huh. um we're running short on time here uh-huh. uh, um is there anything you wanted to make sure we mentioned today that we just we got uh, sidetracked you know, on? We, we did get sidetracked <laughs> but I, I do want everyone i do want everyone to know uh because i i we are in the middle of the silly season yeah and there are a lot of negative ads out there that talk about how nothing is ever happening and nothing is coming well again i invite everyone to if you're on facebook you just you know Check my name, Kevin sure. Mavers. Last name is spelled M-A-E-V-E-R-S. Friend me. I will friend right back. Okay. And we're going to be posting more and more. I sure. mean, just to give you and keep track of what's going on at the Planning Commission. Keep track of what's going on at the City Council. These uh, meetings are open to the public. Yeah, by oh, the way. absolutely. There yeah. and and you don't even have to show up at the actual meeting. Most of them are broadcast or simulcast, I believe, on GoToMeeting. You're very good and through the city's inf- website. All that yeah. information is is right there. But the number of wonderful things that are happening and going to happen. 2022 is going to be an amazing year. Uh, as you know, the uh, uh, Texas Roadhouse just yeah. broke ground. I yeah. mean, there's all kinds of excitement around there's, that. Yeah, there's a lot of restaurants. Bahama Bucks is yeah, Bahama close. Bucks is nearly ready to, yeah. nearly ready to open. The new, the McDonald's down in the south end of just town. Just opened up last week. They yeah. just opened up last week, and, and people don't realize that is a brand new model of McDonald's, okay, that they opened here. And the We have uh, Popeye's Chicken getting, yes. uh, they are going to be breaking ground uh, most likely next month. I, uh, I'm, I'm also on the Chamber of Commerce board, okay. and so Mike Espiritu just happened to do his report yesterday. And he gave an update on the on the uh, Popeye's chicken. Right. The it's actually good news. There's been some delays on that, but it's because they got to make it bigger. Yes, that's, that's the problem. They don't. They're like, you know what? We need to make it a bigger. So they had to re rework the plans to make they, it a bigger uh, facility. They did. We yeah. expected them to break ground. Had everything gone the way it uh, the way it was, yeah. they should have broken ground this month. Yeah. But about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. They called my office, called me personally on a Friday afternoon and said, hey, we need to resubmit our plans. It's like, okay, wait a minute. Everything's ready to go. You guys are supposed to be closing escrow. Uh, They go, yeah, our marketing people took a good hard look and uh, we need a bigger store. You know, so it's how, like well, bigger, how, okay. how much bigger? Well, we'd like 30 more seats and about a thousand square feet more storage area and everything else. I go, that's a pretty significant change yeah. you know, when you start talking about it. But we uh, we got the we got a really good set of plans. We we went back and forth a couple of times. Everything's approved. Good. The uh, the other thing you need to know about that location in particular. That location, the old uh, Wilshire Center, mm-hmm. was actually purchased, uh, sold recently okay you're going to see a complete revitalization a complete oh, renovation of that, entire, that entire facility nice so that's the thing that that uh that that a lot of people don't see is mm-hmm. and they say there's nothing happening people are reinvesting in themselves properties are being bought and sold all yeah. the time uh i've recently started working very closely with main street roswell and we're going to 
uh, work very closely with them, and we're going to see some changes right here on Main Good Street. Too. It's all going to be positive. Good. It's you know. So the the goal the goal though uh, when I come on every month, mm-hmm. I hope is we're going to talk about prosperity coming to nice. Roswell. New things, uh, big things, uh, yeah, cool big things. things, little things, but. And it's it's across the board. It's, yeah. It's it's commercial. It's industrial. It's residential. It's it's places to uh, to have fun, entertainment. The whole it, it's all happening simultaneously. Yeah. And get get ready for it. There's a lot of cool it, stuff happening. It's going to be great. And more to come. So Kevin, I do. I, I look forward to our more conversations here each month, yeah. and I appreciate you spending time with us this morning. And uh, hopefully, this doesn't make you get up too much earlier on a Wednesday morning than you normally would. So <laughs> not too much earlier, yeah. but uh, it's a uh, yeah. I think it's the right thing to do and well, tell Juanita you're going to take off early on the on Wednesdays on the back end that's so. not allowed no, <laughs> oh, well, no Juanita track. wants me to work more oh you know? dang, so, dang. Right. Well, he, uh, well he was here early early like 5 in the morning so just to let you know Yeah. <laughs> thank you Kevin we'll see you next time alright okay? Mike thank you All right, it is 